رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنما A question says Many part of the world will have summer which means longer hours of fasting. What are the motivating factors to fast in hot days? First of all, who mandated fasting? The answer is Allah. Who knows how long or short the day would be? How cold or hot the temperature would be? The answer is Allah. Now, when Allah mandates fasting, upon different regions, yet he does not give, give any permission for them to, fa to break their fast due to hot weather or to long hours. Wouldn't that fall under the category that Allah does not burden a soul beyond what it can bear? The answer is definitely. This means that if a person in the Scandinavian region and he is to fast for 20 consecutive hours and break his fast, does his Maghrib and Isha and Taraweeh and eat his Suhoor in only four hours and then fast again for 20 hours. Isn't this hard? Of course it is hard. Is it possible? Definitely it is possible. And the Muslims over there are doing it without any problem, alhamdulillah. You see, the barakah, the power, the energy comes only from Allah. It doesn't come from our food and drinks. People would argue, say, Sheikh, come on, this is not logical watch out logic is not something you can apply in religion because your logic differs than my logic and our logic differs than shaitan's logic what does shaitan have to do with it he is the father of all weird and sick logic imagine Allah creates Adam with his two hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and orders the angels and the jinn represented in Satan to prostrate to Adam. They all prostrate except Satan. Iblis, why don't you prostrate? He said, with all due respect, logically, this cannot happen i am better than him you created him of clay and i was created of fire and fire is superior to clay the conclusion it's not logical for me to prostrate what was the consequence of such logic satan is doomed in hellfire for eternity now if you try to apply the same logic watch out because you may fall under the same category. Food and drink is needed for our bodies. But when Iman comes on top and reach its perfect limit, you do not need food and drink as you think you do. Come on, Sheikh, what do you mean? It was reported in Sahih, Al-Imam Muslim and others, that when the Prophet was giving us the prophecy of the coming of the Antichrist, known as Ad-Dajjal, the Prophet was telling us that the first year, the rain and the crops, one-third of the rain and crops would cease to come. The second year, two-thirds of the rain and crops would stop. The third year, no rain and no crops would grow. And the animals would die and starve because of that. 
So the companion said, O Prophet of Allah, if there's no crops, no animals, and no rain fall, what would make the people live? The answer was, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar would substitute for their food and drink. Wow! Imagine when people's Iman reach its peak, they would suffice, it would suffice them to make dhikr than to eat and drink. So 20 hours of fasting in the North Pole or somewhere close to that area is not that difficult as you would suspect. As for hot areas, the same applies. But usually it's not this long. Usually it's like 16 hours, 15 hours, give or take an hour. It's hot, it's humid, people are sweating and losing fluid. Yet they are still capable of fasting with the grace of Allah. So what motivates them? It's easy to say. When I fast, when it is all air conditioned and I'm resting and not working, is my reward the same as those who are fasting in hot areas and losing and wasting a lot of their energy? The answer is definitely not. So what motivates them is the greatest reward that awaits them, which is greater than the reward of lazy people like us sitting in the comfort of their offices and in their homes.